information. Um, here's the first step. Find the data button on your calculator. Everybody hit the data button. You should get a screen that looks like this. We're just going to start typing in the data one number at a time and hitting enter. Okay? So I'm going to type in 100, enter, 83, 60, 75, 84, and 95. Okay? Just type in all your data. I'm going to pause for a second and make sure everybody did that. All right, is everybody ready for the next step? Okay. Um, now, here's the main thing. Look above the data button. See how it says stat in green above the data button. That's the menu that I want, the statistics menu. How do I get to the stuff that's in green above the buttons? Second. Second, okay? So everybody hit second data right now. Your screen should look like this. We want one variable statistics, so it's already highlighted, so just hit enter to choose one variable statistics. Your screen should look like this. Now, our data is in L1. L1 is already highlighted, so we can just go ahead and start hitting enter. If for whatever reason L1 is not highlighted, you need to arrow over and make sure it's L1, because that's where the numbers are. But I'm going to start hitting enter. Watch that cursor. <coughs> It's going down, goes down to calc, I hit enter one more time, and I get to this screen. So I hit enter like three times. Okay? Is everybody with me at this screen? Now, looking at this screen, first of all, you should be able to tell me what the mean is. So your calculator is giving you the mean and the standard deviation, and the median for that matter. Um, can you tell me on this screen where the mean is? Right, remember we've learned that X bar represents the mean. Okay, so this is a, probably a quicker way for you to find the mean in the future, especially if you have a lot of numbers. Um, so the mean, and I went ahead and rounded 82.8 when I did this. Now, standard deviation. We will have to scroll down to see the other information. So we will arrow down. Um, can you tell that item number four? is the one that has the symbol for standard deviation. Okay? So there it is. Standard deviation is 13.082, um, which I, I rounded to 13.1. That's how you do it. Okay? Easy enough? Now, that's how you do it. Um, let me point out one more thing to you, and then I'm going to show you another trick on the calculator. Um, the median, I told you that the median was on here somewhere. If we scroll down even further, because remember on the beginning of the page I asked you for a mean, median, mode, range. Um, so it's helpful to know that the calculator does have the median here as well. So to check your work, you can look on this screen and make sure you have the right median. Item 9. Um, the range, you're not going to find the range listed here. But it does give you some information if we scroll around. Um, item B here, x max equals 100. What do you think x max is? What do you think that represents? The highest number. That's the highest number. If I scroll up, item 7, x min, obviously that's the lowest number. How do we calculate the range? 100 minus 60, the highest number minus the lowest number. So it doesn't just give you the range, but it gives you the high and low. When there are a lot of numbers, sometimes it's hard to scan and look. So it's useful to know that it'll give you the high and low. You can just subtract. Now, the calculator's not going to help you much with the mode. You're kind of on your own for the mode. Okay? So there's that. We're basically done, except for I want to show you a trick. You know how on the quiz tomorrow, you're going to have to make the table. You're going to have to show those values uh, on the table by hand. However, if you're clever, everybody hit the uh, data button with me right now. Come back to this screen. 
If you can learn the additional trick that I'm about to show you now, it will help you even set up your table. Now, when the table is as small as this one, uh, you won't really need this. But on the back page, when we have 20 numbers twice, that's 40 numbers to deal with, it will be very helpful to have your calculator doing some of this automatically. Watch how. Um, this is uh, this table is almost perfect for us because it has three columns and our table has three columns. So you see we've got our data in L1 just like we usually do. What normally goes in this middle column? The, the deviation. And how do we calculate the deviation? The data minus the mean. So I would love it if there was a way that I could make list 2 become list 1 minus the mean. Well, there is a way to do that. To fill list 2, we need to make sure we are in list 2 before we start making this formula. Okay? So be in list 2 and hit data and go over to formula and hit enter to add a new formula. So here's the formula right here. List 2 is, we want this to say list 1 minus the mean. So, wow, how are we going to get list one right here? It seems to be all about the data button. So once again, hit the data button. When in doubt, hit the data button, because that seems to be the source of all the information. Um, we want it to say list one. List one is already highlighted, so just hit enter. So now it says, the formula so far says list two will be list one. We want it to say minus the mean. We can just type in the rest because we will say minus and what was the mean that we previously calculated to one decimal place please 82.8 so we will we will make this formula list 2 will be list 1 minus the mean 82.8 if I hit enter right now let's see what happens Brip, it does it it automatically populates the list you, using that formula. It does it for us. It, it uh, subtracts the mean from everything. Okay? Now, use your right arrow key to move over to the third column. What do we usually have in list three here? We square everything. Now, am I squaring list one? No. I'm squaring list two. So, once again, I'm going to hit the data button. I'm going to arrow over to formula and I'm going to hit enter to add a new formula. I want list 3 to be list 2 squared. How do I get list 2 on the screen now? Press data. Press data. Make sure L2 is highlighted. Right now list 1 is highlighted. So hit your down arrow key to highlight list 2 and hit enter. So, so far I've got list 3 will be list 2. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to square it. I want it to be list 2 squared, so I'll hit my X squared button. So list 3 will now become list 2 squared. So if I hit enter, it does it. Okay? So it does that much of it for you. Um, now, I could now add up all these numbers by hand like I always do. But if you're still with me this far, why not one more trick? Again, when there are 20 numbers, the following trick will, re will really help you. Um, <coughs> let's use our, that same information where we found the standard deviation. Everybody hit second data to get back to the statistics menu. Okay? Once again, we're going to do one variable statistics, just like we did before. But be careful. Don't hit enter right now. We want the sum of list 3. Okay? So we need to make sure list 3 is highlighted, because we want the sum of all of list 3. So go over to list 3 with your arrow key. And hit enter. Until you get the list. Okay? Now, we're not going to look at the mean or the standard deviation right now. I want the number that tells me the sum. Can anybody remember the, the symbol for sum? That e. that e. 
Item number five. We learned this early in the year that that's a capital letter sigma. In math and science, this means the sum of everything. So this number, 1026.84, that's the sum of list three. That's what we need. Okay? So if you remember these tricks, your calculator will do so much of this for you. So keep your eye on that 1026.84. So going back to our, our table, um, that's our 1026 that shows up right here. Okay? So that's how your calculator can do so much of this for you.